At Google I.O. 2017, we announced the Lifecycle Library. The Lifecycle Library is a set of libraries and guidance for avoiding memory leaks and solving common Android lifecycle challenges. Now, the Lifecycle Library has hit 2.0, it's part of Jetpack, and it includes new integrations with data binding. This is a tour of the Lifecycle Library's View Model class. A view model holds your app's UI data while surviving configuration changes. Here's why that's actually useful. Rotating your phone is considered a configuration change. Configuration changes cause your whole activity to get torn down and then recreated. If you don't properly save and restore data from the destroyed activity, you may lose that data and end up with weird UI bugs or even crashes. So enter the view model, which of course survives configuration changes. Instead of storing all of your UI data in your activity, put it in the view model instead. Now this helps with configuration changes, but it's also just general good software design. One common pitfall when developing for Android is putting a lot of variables, logic, and data into your activities and fragments. This creates a large, unmaintainable mess of a class and violates the single responsibility principle. You can use view models to easily divide out that responsibility. The view models will be responsible for holding all of the data that you're going to show in your UI, and then the activity is only responsible for knowing how to draw that data to the screen and receiving user interactions, but not for processing them. If your app loads and stores data, I suggest making a repository class as described in the Guide to App Architecture. Make sure your view model doesn't become bloated with too many responsibilities. To avoid this, you can create a presenter class or implement a more fully fledged clean architecture. Okay, so to make a view model, you'll end up extending the view model class. And then you put your UI related instance variables that were previously in your activity into your view model. Then in your activities on create, you get the view model from a framework utility class called view model provider. Notice that view model provider takes an activity instance. This is the mechanism that allows you to rotate the device, get a technically new activity instance, but always ensure that that activity instance is associated with the same view model. With the view model instance, you can use getters and setters to access UI data from your activity. If you want to modify the default constructor, which currently takes no parameters, you can use a view model factory to create a custom constructor. Now, this is the simplest use case of a view model, but the view model class is also designed to work well with live data and data binding. Using all of these together, you can create a reactive UI, which is just a fancy way of saying a UI that automatically updates whenever the underlying data changes. This assumes all of your data in your view model that you plan to show on screen is wrapped in live data. You then should set up data binding as normal. Here's an example XML with the data binding layout tag and the variable tag for your view model. Then in your activity or fragment, you associate the variables used in the XML with the binding. Here's an example with an activity. There's one new line of code, set lifecycle owner. This allows the binding to observe your live data objects in the view model. And it's essentially the magic that lets the binding update whenever the live data updates and the view model is on screen. You can now directly reference live data fields from your view model in your XML. If you combine this with binding adapters, you can move much of the boilerplate logic out of your activity. Note that this became available in Android Studio 3.1 and higher, so make sure you're on the correct version. To learn more, check out the introduction to live data and the docs. Okay, I'm gonna finish off with a few best practices. First tip, you should never pass contexts into view models. This means no passing in fragments, activities, or views. As you saw earlier, view models can outlive your specific activity and fragment life cycles. Let's say that you store an activity in your view model. When you rotate the screen, that activity is destroyed. You now have a view model holding a reference to a destroyed activity, and this is a memory leak. So if you find yourself needing application contexts, which outlive view model life cycles, use the Android view model subclass instead. This includes a reference to the application for you to use. Okay, second tip. View models are meant to be used in addition to on saved instance state. View models do not survive process shutdown due to resource restrictions, but unsaved instance bundles do. View models are great for storing huge amounts of data. Unsaved instance state bundles, not so much. Use view models to store as much UI data as possible so that that data doesn't need to be reloaded or regenerated during a configuration change. Unsaved instance state, on the other hand, should store the smallest amount of data needed to restore the UI state if the process is shut down by the framework. So for example, you might store all of the user's data within the view model, but just store the user's database ID in unsaved instance state. Hopefully this has inspired you to try out the new view model class in your apps, either by itself or with the other architecture components. To learn more about using view models or any of the information that I just mentioned, check out the documentation below.